All right, everybody, this is Miss Summers with some notes today about station models. So this is going in our weather and atmosphere unit. Today is December, December 8th, 2017. So what we're doing today, we are looking at station models. What we want to take away from this is what are they? How do you make them? What are the different parts? And we want to be able to interpret them. So if I give you a picture of one, you can tell me what it means. And if I give you a description of something, you can make a picture that would represent it. So what a station model is, it's this picture right here. It is a visual representation, so it's a picture. of current weather, okay? So this is gonna be at a specific time, at a specific place, this is a snapshot, All right? So within this one picture, we have a lot of tiny parts and all these little parts give us a complete idea of what's going on. So let's look at those now, All right? One of the most important things here is gonna be temperature. Temperature on a station model is going to be this number in the top left corner. So I'm going to write that down. Temperature is in the top left. That just tells you how hot or cold it is. Dew point is the number directly below that. So that's the bottom left. Now remember, your dew point is how much you would need to cool the air down in order to get 100% relative humidity. All right. Our next piece is air pressure, which is this number right here that is in the top right. We'll talk more about that uh, here in a few moments. Barometric tendency, what I mean by that is if the air pressure is rising, falling, or staying the same. And sometimes this number might not be here if the pressure isn't changing. But if it is, it will be in the bottom right. Wind speed and direction is going to be these lines that are coming off of this central circle. So I'm just going to put the lines. Direction is going to be, if you imagine this as a compass with this being north, south, east and west over here. This is showing you where the wind is coming from. So this line, because it's in this quadrant right here, it's not from the north, it's not from the east, it's from somewhere in between. So that would be from the northeast. These lines that are on that represent wind speed. So a longer line represents 10 and a smaller line represents 5. And this is in knots, which is a, just another way to measure speed. Um, so obviously the more you have, the stronger the wind is. All right, other things that other parts of this station model that you would want to know. Current weather, things like rain or snow or fog or sleet, that's going to be between temperature, and dew point. So if something is going on, it would be in this particular part of the station model. All right, and the last thing that we can find using our station model is cloud cover. And we determine cloud cover by looking at this central circle. So cloud cover, how much of the circle is shaded in. So if half the circle is shaded in, that's 50%, that would be 50% cloud cover. All right, so I know that's a lot, and you'll have practice to uh, practice identifying where temperatures, dew point is, all that good stuff. But I want to talk a little bit more about this number right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change my paper, I'm gonna draw a couple of 
Imitation models. I'll just throw some of these together. We'll do two of them. Let's say... That's a good one. We'll leave this one. We'll give you a few clouds. I'm going to make up a temperature right now. That's 59. That's 57. And over here. Okay. I'm just going to put no wind in there just to make our life easier. All right. With pressure, remember pressure is these numbers in the top right corner of our station models. But here's the trick, here's the catch. It's not actually this number. Okay? You have to change the number to get whatever your pressure is. All right, so there's a couple rules you have to follow, but they're not terribly difficult. All right? <clears throat> if the number in your station model for pressure is greater than 500, all right, so 600, 700, 800, or 900, what you're going to do, you will add a 9 in front. So you'll add a 9 in front. Front, that's an N, everybody. You'll add a 9 in front and put a decimal in front of the last digit. Last. Can I fit that on there? I'm going to try. Digit. There you go. Okay? So, for this example, 895 is a number larger than 500. So, I'm going to add a 9. I'm going to write the rest of the number, 895. And I'm going to put a decimal in front of the last digit. So, a decimal between the 5 and the 9. So what this means is that's how many millibars of pressure there is. That's what that means. All right. Now, not all your numbers are going to be greater than 500. Sometimes you'll have much smaller numbers. You have to follow a different set of rules. If your number is less than 500, instead of adding a 9 in the front, you'll add a 10 to the front of the number. And, just like this one, you'll put a decimal, you'll put a decimal in front of the last digit. Boop. So, for this one, 200, 221 is less than 500. So, I'm going to change that. I'll just put a little error right here. That would be 10. 221, and a decimal right here. Most pressures, most of your air pressure values, once you change them to these, should be between 900 and 980, and 10, 10.30 roughly. Um, they can go a tiny bit out of these ranges, but if you end up with an air pressure, if you tell me, oh, I have an air pressure of 600 millibars, that's definitely not within the normal range. So you would want to make sure that you follow these rules. Okay. Everybody's leaving. Yay. No. All right. So, now what we will look at, symbols for weather, all right? This is what I was talking about, um, let's
these symbols in the middle of your station model will tell you what type of weather you are currently experiencing. And there's a lot of them. There's a ton of different symbols. I don't expect you to memorize all of them, but there's a handful um, about, we'll do three that I'd like you to know. Okay? So our first one is just a plain old dot. Plain old dots equal rain. Which kind of makes sense, they look like little raindrops. Our next symbol looks like that. And you can probably guess, well, that kind of looks like a snowflake, and that's what it is. All right, so that's why I have that here. My temperature is 14. If it's going to be precipitating, I would expect snow. And our last symbol that I want you to know, because I think it looks really awesome, it kind of looks like a capital R, and then there's like a little arrow <coughs> that comes off the bottom of it. And what this equals are thunderstorms. And I want you to know this because we talked about pressure yesterday um, and fronts and how we associate things like cold fronts and low pressure with severe weather like thunderstorms. So you can identify that. Yay! Um, sometimes you'll see these symbols used repeatedly, like I have here. Basically what that means, guys, is the intensity of that precipitation. All right? So if you only have one dot, that's not a whole lot. You know, whatever. Just a little drizzle. If you have two dots, that's a moderate amount, so moderate rainfall, moderate snow. If you have three or more, that means the precipitation of that is very heavy. All right. So I know my symbols. I know how to calculate the pressure. I know what it is. I have an idea of what all these numbers mean. So if I give you one, you could be, you could tell me temperature is 14, dew point is 12, pressure is, uh, that would be 997.2. But what I want us to know, or what I want you to be able to do with this, is to make, is to extrapolate other information that's not necessarily there. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Let's say I have this. We're going to say that's one, two, three. Yeah, that sounds like a good number. 62, 48. Just making these up. No, you're not. Yes, I am, JJ. Okay. So, from this station model, what I could tell. My temperature is 62 degrees, my dew point is 48. My pressure, following those rules, that number is less than 500. So that's going to be a 10 there. I'm going to put 1, 2, 3. That's my pressure. This, because this is a negative here, this means my pressure is falling or decreasing. Now, even though I don't have any weather happening right here at the moment, I could extrapolate well, I could also spell because pressure is falling expect bad weather soon so things like rain maybe I could expect that storms so I can extrapolate what I know about air pressure and changes in air pressure and associate that with the weather. Something else I might be able to extrapolate, humidity, relative humidity. So I'm gonna compare two of them. I'm gonna make them both 50% cloud cover because that's what I decided. Uh, let's have a slight breeze this way. Let's have a stronger wind over here just because I want to. We'll have them 
be the same pressure and I won't worry about pressure changing. Alright, so everything except the wind speed, because I just changed that myself. I have the same pressure, same temperature, different dew points. So this is a, a quick review of dew point, humidity, and how all those go together. Remember, if your dew point is closer to actual temperature, that means you have a very high relative humidity. I would not have to cool the air down that much in order to get 100% humidity. Likewise, if your dew point is farther away, it's greater than, or not greater than, that would be crazy. If your dew point is a lot less than actual temperature, that simply indicates a lower relative humidity. The air is not very saturated. I would have to cool it down a lot more to get the air to become saturated. So based on these two pictures, these two station models, here I have high humidity, and over here I would have much lower relative humidity. Mommy.